introduction of the uh, IBM PC computer has basically revolutionized uh, the way today's businesses operate. Hello, my name is Brian Ockletree, Vice President of Systems Training Group, and this is Lisa Milne, President of Systems Training Group, and we do much training and consulting in this area on microcomputers and have applied, applied many training systems to first-time users of the IBM PC. Our main objective today is going to address some common concerns that we have found people have being a first-time user to the IBM PC. The first area of concern that we have found to be very common among first-time users, where a first-time user can be either, either one who has just purchased an IBM PC but has yet, not yet used it, or one who has, is looking to buy IBM PC to apply to their home or, or business needs. The first area will be, what does a computer do? Uh, a lot of people don't know what a computer does, and they don't understand why everyone is telling them to automate their current business procedures. What benefit is it going to have? And the current system has worked for 20 years. Why change it? Why bring this great burden of learning all this new material on, its, on their personnel? You know, why do it? What, what benefit is it going to have? The second area will be the selection of the hardware and the software. This is a process that a lot of people skip. Skipping this process can lead to several problems. First of all, you can buy a system that way outsuits your needs. You can spend a lot of money on something that you're not going to utilize and therefore not, not justify the cost. It's not going to increase your e efficiency at all. Secondly, you can underpurchase and buy something that really is not going to do enough to justify converting from a manual method to a computer method. And finally, you can buy the wrong stuff. You can buy something that's going to do word processing really great, but you need a spreadsheet. But you use it because you bought it anyway, and it's so inefficient that it would be better to do it by hand. So we'll review that to tell you some good procedures to go by when selecting your system. And finally, and probably most importantly, we're going to tell you, answer the question of, OK, I got my equipment. I got a lot of money sitting on this desk. What do I do with it? How do I apply this to my needs? Uh, Lisa? Brian, before um, I talk about selecting your computer system, I'd like to address um, the fear that people have of computers. All of us have a fear of computers. It's just on different levels. Um, it's new. Uh, most of us have been introduced to systems in our adult life, and um, that is very intimidating. Um, if you want to know a little bit about computers, if you have children or you um, know someone who has kids, ask them about computers. The eight-year-old um, will tell you all about computers, will ramble on, and that's basically because they're not intimidated. They're introduced to it at a very young age, and um, it's, it's just like writing a letter with pencil and paper that and, we do. And they go into it open-minded, which exactly. is something adults do not do. It's something where the typical adult has this aversion to learning something new or taking some new work on their shoulders, which is learning something. And they therefore mm -hmm. want to remain with the nice manual method that's working fine. You know, right. that's going to work fine. They'll have their reports. I don't know if you've had this um, happen in your training sessions, Brian, um, but it, it's uh, musical chairs. Everybody wants the trainer to sit behind the computer. And um, we do hands-on training. That's the best way you'll get familiar with the system. It's just a piece of hardware. Uh, you turn it on just like any other system, um, just like your radio, your microwave, you just flip a switch up. On your computer, you have a screen to view information. You have a CPU where you store data, whether it's on a floppy diskette or a fixed diskette. And um, you also have a printer for output. Um, turning on that system, which a lot of times is referred to booting up a system, basically just gets the power going and then you command it from there. It doesn't command you. Um, I have a funny story. A lot of times um, not only are people intimidated by systems, um, but they don't want to feel ignorant. Most people do not want to have a conversation, I imagine, with you, Brian, on computers because they may feel um, stupid if they're not informed or they've never been introduced to computers. They use the wrong words. Exactly, or ask stupid questions. Uh, there are no stupid questions if, if it's a new subject. 
And if anything, um, being intimidated and not um, approaching the subject is um, more shallow than, than every once in a while saying something that's a little off. We had um, a student once, this is a floppy diskette, and he um, wanted to know when he should take the jacket off before we started the training session. And he had us all giggling in the training session because if you don't know about floppy diskettes, the jacket does not come off like a, um, a record. It all goes in together, but and, that's an example. And Lisa is now illustrating what not to do with a diskette, and that is hold it on all sides. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that comes in the later part of the class, so we'll right. cover we'll that. Show you how to <laughs> Hold your diskettes, sir. And I think another area of big concern with first-time users is their association with the computer and programming. And I think that this is something that that is why there's so much software. That's what software does. Software eliminates the programming aspect of a computer.